Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Michelle Olson and I will be your presenter today. We're going to be talking about why the cloud is gaining so much traction. I have been in the cloud world for about 13 years. I've been at a couple Microsoft partners uh, delivering cloud services the whole time. Act in about 2000 uh, when uh, Gartner and everybody else was making predictions about the cloud. Uh, my passion is definitely working with clients and making sure they're comfortable. So after this presentation, if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll have my contact information at the end of the slide deck for you to be able to reach out to me. The goal uh, for us as a cloud service provider here at Celsius is to make sure that you we're an extension of your business. Cloud service is really about the, uh, that in general. We're not trying to replace any uh, infrastructure or people at your location. It's really about uh, helping you grow your business and making best business choices about the cloud. So again, if you need anything, have any questions, reach out to me. I'm here for you to help you and guide you through all of your decisions with the cloud uh, working with Celsius. At the end of our presentation, or during the presentation, if you wouldn't mind, uh, please uh, add your in the chat the questions that you may have, submit it and raise your hand, and we will address those questions at the end of the presentation. The topics of discussion today are going to be rapid deployment, more services that are available through the cloud and those per user pricing models, clients researching educating themselves, resources maintenance and compliance. And I think these are all the top key pieces of why the cloud is getting so much traction. It really defines what we as people uh, in the business and our personal lives uh, have really transitioned in the IT world. So back in the 2000 time frame when I started, you know, 99, Gartner had already predicted it's going to be the next best thing to slice, slice bread. Uh, then ISP started popping up all over the place. They were trying to be everything to everybody. You know, our business that I had at the time was really trying to focus on the Dynamics products, you know, being what we need to be focused on. A lot of the customers or clients uh, kind of detracted from that and it was uh, there's a lot of struggles during that time frame. Security was a big concern. There was a lot of people that wouldn't even do uh, online banking at the time. That's always a, a big thing back in the day when you first start for security, being able to cross over. It becomes a concern and you have to work through all of that. Clients weren't ready to be the guinea pigs to be able to test those uh, infrastructures with their own personal business data. So it was really hard to get people to come on board. You had to do a big sales and show in the quality of your security at your network and be able to provide them justifications for that. A lot of the ASPs weren't even staying in business. They would drop off or sell their company to another uh, business, a larger business, because they couldn't keep up with the infrastructure. The costs were too absorbent to be able to keep your business going. And the model really didn't save clients money. There was too much hardware that had to go into the mix. Uh, it would be an equivalent to what you could do on premise, but it really wasn't saving the client the money that they were expecting. So why is it gaining so much traction today? One is the rapid deployment. At the beginning, we would have to order our hardware. You know, say we had a CDW or a Dell. We'd have to place that order, wait for that order to come in if it wasn't back ordered, making sure that the specs were right for the client. You would get into the data center. You'd make sure that it was working uh, properly. What if a hard drive or something had failed in it? You'd have to send it back. The data center itself, there's uh, pieces uh, that needed to be addressed when you're actually installing new hardware. Do we have enough power for that server that's in the data center? Software was always an issue. You'd have to download, or actually not download, you'd have to uh, receive the software in the mail. You'd get a disk if that disk was good. Uh, then you'd have to go to the data center, install it uh, into the CD-ROM, uh, upload it, and wait for those types of things to happen. Today we get to skip all of that. Uh, we have virtual machines that provide redundancy and failover. You can have somebody work remotely to be able to save time and money for you so that you can keep the cost down for your client. You can download and track the software directly from the internet from those machines. Virtual machines have really improved our lives because you can actually take replications of production environments for testing and development. 
which makes it really great for uh, a rapid deployment for our clients. Doing upgrades from this point is also really great because you can, again, take the copies of those virtual servers and get them up and running for your clients immediately. There's more and more services available via the cloud. Just even the last three to four years, we've seen some great improvements. But today, accounting packages, your CRM, uh, and all the different components are starting to tie together in their own cloud world. So you can make sure that your uh, Dynamics or your Sage products connect over with uh, your Office products, your Exchange, and they tie in together, tracking your contacts for your relationship management, uh, even your phone systems. I was uh, able to use a phone system that was voice over IP that was all directly through the cloud. I paid one fee for this as my business line and I was able to bring that business phone with me wherever I would go. Storage and backup, you know, personal use. Uh, you're able to back up your own personal computers directly to the cloud for a minimal cost. Uh, and with your business, you can do the same thing, even replicating in, for a disaster recovery plan for both personal and business use. These accounts are all out there and available for you. It's just a matter of accessing it. And one thing I'd like to point out, like say Ancestry.com, you know, this information is all out there. It's not like you're uh, moving this data. It's something that's available. It's a matter of uh, accessing and creating an account to be able to get to that information. So with more and more services being able to go to the cloud, also comes with that is the ability to pay uh, for that on a monthly basis. So then you get the per-user pricing model. And that's where a lot of companies have been struggling in the cloud world today. But we're going to get better at that. There's a number of, say, third-party products that you'd like to be able to add in with your accounting software or with your, um, your CRM for a dashboard with SharePoint. Uh, people are really working hard in businesses to come up with a plan for how to make it a per-user pricing model because it makes it so simple for budgeting. You're able to get access to new versions of the software um, through your pricing models. Adding and removing users is really important for this model too because you don't have to pay for those uh, software up front. Uh, one of my favorite stories is about a client that had trouble back in 2008. They had over 150 employees at the time, but with the recession they had to drop down to under 50 users. And the client called me about a year later when they started adding more users back into the system, saying that it was a really great benefit for him and his business because they were able to reduce those costs, account for it in their budget, and didn't have to have software sitting on their shelf that was really getting no use that they had already paid big money for. So that's a big uh, uh, plus, I feel, for the cloud world, is being able to add and reduce users uh, as needed for your business, especially during busy time. It's, it's a really great tool to be able to um, have that managed for you as well. The traction you we're seeing is really, I think, due to the clients researching, educating themselves. For uh, the webinars like this, you are getting more information to help you make better business decisions. You can go online and I'm sure you can pop up 10 top questions to be able to ask your cloud provider. It'll ask about disaster recovery, it'll ask about backups licensing, uh, and it'll make you feel like you're in control of your business when you're making a decision about moving to the cloud. You can see reviews of companies and find out if they are doing what they say they're doing. You can look at audit reports to be able to get more information and get com comfortable with the company you're choosing. And a lot more people and clients in, are using these types of services again in their personal life and they understand the concept and they become more comfortable. You know, putting your personal photos and your music and uh, your billing, being able to access those things, knowing that they're secure, not having any issues with those types of applications, really makes a uh, transition over to a business model much easier as well. Resources and maintenance. This is important, I feel, because of the access that you have to that cloud team. As I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, we really want to be an extension of your team. So you can reduce the training costs for the, your, uh, your employees to be able to uh, put servers into your data center, if you had one locally, or managing and maintaining your local infrastructure. We become that other team for you. 
You have someone that you can look to as the advocate. Call and check on uh, making sure things are okay. Adding and reviewing what software you want to add to your business. The cloud team that you're going to be working with also has certifications. So you're, uh, we are already maintaining that. So if you want to make sure that your person is, um, you know, has their certifications in operating systems, SQL, Citrix, and things like that, uh, our team is already knowledgeable. We have specialized people in each of those product lines, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Automatic escalation. This is a, when you talk about the cloud, you can know that you have somebody there that's responsible for this. It goes back to that one net concept. You have email that's down in the middle of the night. People can't send out the reports. Uh, the, you're trying to get your business to be able to get investors. You call uh, your, you can know that you can have this resource to be able to support you and be able to get your system back up and running properly. Cloud providers should be monitoring the environment that you have with them 24-7 making sure that the servers that you have available for your business are up and running. They should be able to know about the processes and resources available that are accessing the system if there's attempts to hacks onto that system. How much resources are being utilized in the bandwidth within that data center? This is all information that should be able to be provided to you and look at your environment to make sure everything is working just like they say that it's supposed to be. Then you can actually focus on the applications or the business line that you need to have happen internally with the, why you utilize in the cloud. Compliance is also something that is uh, become something of a very important aspect in the business world. There's a lot of companies who can get discounts based on uh, an audit that they have in their environment. Say they have um, an IT infrastructure that they have for their business line. They can rely on the cloud provider to provide all the details, and you don't have to have a person dedicated to 24-7 uh, uh, trying to get these audit people away from you. What you can do is rely on your cloud department and team and get that report available from them. They provide all the specs. You had a nice, neat report over to your, uh, your audit team that are auditing you. Licensing, you can become making sure that you're compliant. There's a number of companies out there that aren't following the rules and get in trouble and have to pay large sums of fees for this. So with uh, utilizing your cloud provider, you can look to them to be able to provide a list of here's the licensing that we have, knowing that you're not double replicating for any costs associated to it, and you can make sure that you are keeping track of everything that needs to be done within your business. You can make sure that each of the users have access to those licenses and what they're actually using on the system. So the cloud has really gained all the traction, you know, again, going back to the different components of it. You know, rapid deployment, the licensing, the backups and structure, you know, it's all coming together nicely to be able to provide you a nice package to be able to uh, prepare budgets, going back to being, uh, adding users, removing users, making growth, adding and removing appliances and servers as needed. It's become a crucial factor in every business. You say today you're not using anything, but you are going to look at a new product, and all of a sudden they say, Look, we have a cloud offering for this. Would you like to be, to be interested? You can start with something small, say Exchange or Office 365. Then you can transition and getting more comfortable with utilizing your uh, accounting packages or your CRM. I think CRM has made a huge headway in the uh, protection and getting businesses to follow into that world of the cloud because you're adding your leads, your opportunities, and moving forward with those types of things first, and then getting that comfort level and moving over your accounting package or anything else that you'd be interested in. So the, we wanted to keep this uh, presentation quick making sure that you are getting the information that you can uh, bring back to your team to be able to talk about why is the cloud making more, getting more traction and get a, a more of a case on your side to be able to present to your team to move over to the, the cloud at some point. So hopefully you gain some information today and uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer any of them for you.
And if you're not comfortable with asking here today, uh, feel free to reach out to me my phone number and my email address. And also, um, you know, after, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you to make sure that you're comfortable. Any type of question is a good question to me in regards to the cloud. We actually don't have any questions yet, Michelle, but if you just want to keep that um, information up, and I'll, I'll chime in if anybody has any questions here. Perfect. Thank you. I'll go back to the initial screen here. Okay. Here's one question. What are some reasons companies will keep IT services in-house versus using the cloud? They uh, may need to keep a file server or print servers on location. What I've been finding is a lot of companies will outsource that to be able to manage that remotely for them or utilizing their cloud offering. But there's still some desktops and uh, things of that nature that IT people uh, uh, become, you know, that becomes their focus for the company. Or you have other infrastructures, say you have also have an Oracle or a Linux that makes, uh, you know, or AutoCAD. There may be other products that aren't currently hosted in a cloud world. So the, the IT team will focus on those products alone. And then you can rely on the cloud provider to do all the other components, like your accounting package and your CRM. Um, one more question. Do you only manage the Great Plains side, or do you manage Exchange side as well? We can do Exchange, but a cloud provider such as Microsoft does it cost effective through the Office 365. So you can uh, go out there. They provide, uh, I think it's 25 gigs per user uh, through the Office 365 program. They back it up. There's lots of great pieces. I think if you choose to keep it at a cloud provider in a private cloud model, it has to be a larger number of users or, um, say, a a legal reason to keep data up to seven years or something of that nature. Um, otherwise, the Microsoft Office 365 with Exchange is a great option for that. But yes, we do have the capability of doing a private cloud model. We have a hand raised here, so I'm going to unmute Jeff so he can ask you his question. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, security issues uh, involved that you have to take into consideration when moving to the cloud for an application? Okay, great question. Um, security is to make sure if you have a web application that you're using, that you make sure that it's locked down and secure. You don't have anonymous users going in. And if you do have anonymous users, that that web server is split off from your application or your database backend. The cloud team that you'd be working with uh, should uh, have those understanding of what is secure and what is not. So a typical environment, say for Dynamics GP, you would have an application server, you would have a SQL server backend, and if you had Business Portal or any other web services, you'd have that in another application server separated so you, you could restrict the access into that serve the, your back-end database. Some other security is making sure that you're using the proper password uh, policies, not just using Bob and Bob for your passwords. Uh, making sure that the cloud team that you have is following security protocol, making sure it's locked down to a certain degree uh, so you can um, limit what your users are seeing through that system and making sure it's secure. But I would say that um, how your, your servers are being accessed, you know, when it comes into web, um, locking down if you, through the SSL certificates, I think those are also good uh, components to have in your infrastructure. Uh, 
Um, so does Socius manage the GP side or does Microsoft Office 365? Socius is a cloud uh, services, uh, we, all, we have our own cloud services. We manage that GP for you. So we have our own data center. We have our own infrastructure within that data center. And we are, have the consultants at Socius manage that application for you if we are your VAR. And the cloud team here at Socius is able to uh, manage those servers for you and monitor them 24-7. In regards to Office 365, if you wanted to have that route, Microsoft actually manages the infrastructure for Office 365, but it can tie into our infrastructure uh, through a, a, port, a port that we tie into it that we securely watch and manage through our level platforms. And again, we still continue to manage that application for you, the Dynamics GP or the Sage or whatever product that we would be hosting for you. And I just wanted to add that each environment is a little different. We do a private cloud offering. So when you were to call and talk with me about your environment, we'd do a quote based on what you have for your world and be able to lay out the infrastructure, how it would look on our side, and provide you with a per-user pricing model uh, and be able to talk through where your growth would be uh, and only having you pay for what you're currently using. So you don't have to buy the infrastructure that you're planning for something that's uh, six to nine months out. We can add and grow that environment for you as needed. So I will go back to the screen with my contact information for you. Feel, feel free to reach out. I have a huge love for cloud services. I've been, you know, as I said before, in this business for a long time and love talking with clients and making sure that they're comfortable uh, with what we are presenting to them and what their world looks like in the cloud. Looks like that's all the questions that we're going to get for today, but um, like Michelle said, if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out to her, your account manager, and they can certainly get you in contact with her. Um, and thank you for joining us today, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.